We are here in the beautiful sunny treehouse today. I'm so happy because my friend John Arnold has oh graciously <laughs> is coming in so we can chat. I okay, I just want to be up front. You don't know John by maybe looking at him unless you're you know you happen to be in our neighborhood because John and I live pretty close. And by the way, thank you so much, John, for doing this. I oh, mean, glad to. I it, like I said, you will probably know John though if you are interested in photography to um man web design to uh, we're going to talk about virtual reality because i'm not going to lie okay and i'm not putting john on too big of a pedestal here but john is like one of my heroes my creative heroes and that's that is no lie john will tell you <laughs> john has schooled me when i started off as a wee pup and trying to do some web design and Remember i have flash yes yeah we we have we're going to show our age yeah. here but we were the generation who designed stuff yeah. in flash we we're rocking the flash. that's right baby so I can remember specifically one time coming over and I brought a project to John and I was like, dude, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. And I'm sure the file size was like a gig, you know, for something that was supposed yeah. to be online. And John graciously was looking at the code and what I was doing. And he's like, there's some things that might want to change here. And he's like, I just loved it. Cause you were like, you are where I was at. I'll never forget the words you said. You're like, you are uh, where I was at maybe about a year yeah. ago. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so don't feel bad. Um, but nonetheless, what I'm really excited for you guys to see is John, okay, you may not know him from his, like, he's an artist, all right? He is an artist in every sense of the word of what I believe is an artist. He, okay. You are crazy creative. I used to sometimes say, um, which, you you know, you can talk about this, but I feel like you just have creative finger, magic golden fingers. You just know how to create things that um, I'm like, you'll get into like a video or you'll start working on. Um, when we were doing Flash, like yeah. I'll watch some of your stuff, yeah. and I mean my jaw would just drop. I'm like, how does he do it? Like you know. Well, I'm thrilled to hear that it has the illusion of competence there. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I feel the same way too sometimes, but no, seriously. So, um, but I wanted to start off with the first and foremost, if you don't mind, just kind of introducing yourself, what you, what your passion is about, um, and then, like I said, I really want to talk about camera sim because I'm gonna bet if you haven't downloaded it yet and you're using it on your camera. Um, or your phone that you're probably going to want to after we chat. So long story short, would you mind first just telling us about who you are? Like, give me a bit of your background. How in the world okay. did you get to where you're at right now? Uh, well, I started off, I guess, let me think. I started in 98. That's when I like quit my only real job I ever had <laughs> out of college. And, um, and so I just started doing web design and print design and photography. Um, and looking back on that, I, uh, something that I've lost that I had then was this, uh, unconscious, uh, incompetence. It's like where I didn't know what I wasn't good at. So I, I didn't feel I had any barriers. Uh, right. Right. And maybe that's just a 20 something thing yeah. that a 40 something thing doesn't <laughs> have anymore, but man, that was right. freeing to yeah. just have the, again, it's an illusion, have the illusion that you can do you know, whatever you want. You just go out and do it. Yeah. And, um, so that was, that was a nice, I don't know, state of mind to be in to start a business. And, um, so yeah, I did a lot of web design photography and then that, uh, did that for 10 years or so. And then what kind of set me on my current path was when, as you know, doing web design, you do a lot of graphic design, just making things look. Pretty, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there was a development a, a development shop in town that was building uh, some software for a client. I remember the budget was a million dollars. Holy I'm cow. Thinking, you yeah. know, I was building thousand dollar websites at yeah. the time and thinking that's, I just can't even comprehend that. Right. So, but I had a connection with this guy and he wanted, he liked the design work that I did. And then he wanted me to uh, help out by making their screens look good that they were building uh, for this, for this company. Okay. 
and I was thrilled. And so that was my first entry into user interface design, UI design. Right, right. And uh, it was great, but at the end of that project, I saw something I wasn't expecting. And that was I saw these these excited users sit down in front of this shiny new application that cost a million dollars right. to build, and they hated it. Yeah, uh, man, isn't that nuts? Yeah, and wow. it, it was difficult to use, even though the screens looked good. Uh, just people didn't like it. And then so that was sort of my light bulb moment that there's something more to technology than that it can just do something. Yeah. Um, and then so that sent me down this path of just exploring this whole idea of user experience and how a human being interacts with technology. And that's the whole field of uh, UX, user experience design. Yeah, and which so, is under, seems like it's just, maybe you would attest to this, it's like underappreciated. Like you said, it could look really good on the outside, but if it's not easy yeah, to use. Yeah, fortunately that has changed because I can good. remember when I was all excited about user experience design uh, 10 years ago, trying to sell it in this town, right. which is about 10 years behind like the east or west coast. Yeah. Um, I just got a lot of blank stares um, hmm. you know, from the, a lot of development shops that I talked to because they'd be like, we can build anything and make you know the application do whatever we want. That, that's enough. Why should we spend money to actually make it enjoyable to use? Uh, but I'll tell you what changed that. I can trace, um, I can trace my sort of uh, career and doing the UX and UI work back to the day the iPhone came out. Really? That changed everything. Huh? Yeah. Because now, because think of it, before the iPhone, remember what phones were like? The, yeah, they were hot. They're fl like yeah, flip, the flip phones, tiny, and <laughs> trying to text. <laughs> On a, oh, on yeah, a, like A, E, A, B, C. Yeah, yeah it was like nuts. It? Yeah. Um, and so, but people just accepted that, that that was the cost of, that was the mental cost of using that technology. If it was hard to use, it wasn't the technology's fault. It was my fault. I'm just not smart enough. Right, I haven't yeah. worked hard enough at this. Yeah, yeah. But when the iPhone came out, then people were like, whoa, I can, I can have a phone that is actually fun to use and actually being able to touch and swipe instead of cryptic keys and things like that. Uh, shortly after that, that's when people, I was no longer having to have the conversation about why user experience matters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just, it made, it made it so much easier to sell user experience work. Oh yeah. Well, and like you said, I mean, even if you, Whatever your feelings are, people, about Apple products, but um, I do use them, so I'm not going to lie. Just full disclosure. But, I mean, it is. It's amazing how they've made something accessible, like mm -hmm. easy to use. It's easy to understand. Mm -hmm. um, for those who love to hack into them, you know, it's not like that's the, that wasn't their goal. It was like, let's just make it simple. Yeah. Um, and probably why they're killing it, you know. And well, yeah, still and it. that changed the opinion. Um, it changed the philosophy, really, of all the major tech manufacturers. Uh, now... It's like you don't have anything unless it's easy to use. Right? Yeah. And that just wasn't the mentality uh, before. The, the, the analogy that I read early on you know, years ago when I was studying this stuff uh, was that of a, a dancing bear. That if, if you saw, like if you looked out your window right now and saw a, dare, uh, a bear dancing, uh, that would be pretty interesting and maybe even impressive be entertaining yeah <laughs> um, but after a while it would dawn on you that it doesn't dance very well okay and so before the iphone we were all it was good enough to have dancing bear wear uh, i love this analogy this is yeah. really good <laughs> but after the iphone came out it's no longer acceptable for something to yeah. work it has to work well Right. But, well, one thing I think is uh, really interesting, you, you've, you've mentioned, and I would love to have your, your thoughts on it. So I was at a conference just yesterday um, that was all about play. And it wasn't just, yeah. this was not, you know, really, there were, I think I may have been the only artist mm -hmm. there, but it was just all about the power of play and creativity and mm -hmm. such. And I think one thing I love when I come over, um, just recently I was over your house, and just, it's my chance to see what you're playing with. Yeah. Um, and like you just mentioned, when you started off, like, the power of like I, I'm I'm not hindered by what I can't do because I don't know what I can't do. Yeah. So how how have you like tackle you know utilize the idea of play from then and now like how's that work in your? Flow? Um, I, I think of it as you're right. It totally is play, but that's uh, driven by just curiosity. Um, that's my favorite emotion. Yeah. Curiosity, and um, I'm not the 
I'm not the fastest or most competent developer or designer. I mean, at all. Right. Uh, I know so many people that are just, I, I'm amazed at how fast they can crank stuff out. That is not me. But how I compensate for that is just, it's just curiosity. And that, um, and that fortunately for me, translates into just a, a determination. Well, I will just, I will pick at something, I mean, for hours on end until I can get it to work. Um, and it's purely just because I am so, I have to see this work. I have to see yeah, it because yeah. I just, I just want to see it work. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't matter that it took me, you know, hours when someone who actually knew what they were doing could have done it in half an hour. Yeah. Well, what I think is so cool, okay, so one of the things is, you know, like we're trying to do with Outrageous is mm -hmm. you see creativity and being an artist is like, it's beyond painting. Because honestly, oh, yeah. I'm just as fascinated by the person who can sculpt something out of some piece of marble as I am someone who takes something um, like an app or a design mm -hmm. or, a, you know, um, and takes it in that same direction. So mm -hmm. I'm just curious, I mean, because when you say that, like, it feels like one, I love it because I talk to students or people about when you make physical art, let's say, yeah. the user experience. Like, mm -hmm. what do you want people to, to read yeah. when, you, when they approach your work? Mm -hmm. um, because you may either not be there to explain it, or you want them to interact with it in a mm -hmm. certain way. But that's cool. Like, you, that moment you just said, when you put that app out there, and I would love to know. So, and I, we'll talk about it here in a minute. Like, yeah. what was that feeling like? when yeah when it's it's your baby like an yeah, artwork you yeah. put it out there and you're excited to see how people are going to interact with it what's the feedback did they get out of it what you were hoping they would get out of it because yeah. it is it's a painting i mean it is it is an art artwork what you, yeah and i would i'll answer that and then i would like to hear if if you feel the same way because here's what i've noticed about myself it's this it's this pattern that when i start a new project like um about a month ago now, I released a new version of Camera Sim that's all based on a 3D gaming engine. Yeah. And um, I worked on that for a year, which I don't recommend at all, working on anything for a year. I'm, it's impressive. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm since adjusting my project uh, scope, development scope, to be like a, a three-month window. That's like my new constraint that I'm impos imposing upon myself. Um that every project moving forward, my first version of whatever it is, I have to be able to do in three months. Uh, because to go beyond that is feeding a, a character flaw that I'm trying to, to squash, and it's this. I, on the front end of a project, I love being driven by the, curi the curiosity, just seeing if, I can, if this whole idea will, will work. And if, if I can prove the concept that it will work, then it becomes this never-ending process of making it perfect. Yeah, and man. I used to think perf uh, being a perfectionist was a virtue. Uh, I I don't think Isn't that, that interesting? anymore. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a curse uh, because I will fuss over details that don't matter. I think it, it you want to fuss over details that matter, but when they stop mattering, um, when they no longer matter, I have a hard time discerning where that line is. Mm -hmm. And when I get to the end of a project and it's getting close to being able to release it, I've noticed that I start slowing down. I start finding things to fuss over. picking at it, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's just a fear that I've worked on this so long that when you finally put it out there, you're kind of putting yourself out there. This is just how I feel mm -hmm. about it. And uh, that fear of what will people think. I know, uh, right? Help, I, I can feel myself digging my heels in. Oh, yeah. Um, but once I force myself to get it out there and people actually start using it and buying it, then it's like, ah, yeah. <laughs> that's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. Well, you're, uh, you're your harshest critic. I mean, yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, I literally do this exercise with, uh, especially with business people, which okay. I love. It's where I have them, I have, they have 30 circles and I give them 30, I think, a minute. Okay. And I say, draw in every circle. Okay. And I don't say what, I yeah. just say draw. And then it's amazing, like, after they're done, you know, how many got four done? And it's like literally about 50%, right? <laughs> yeah. And then, it, and yeah. nobody usually gets done. There's maybe one, I had one yesterday who actually just put a dot in each one because I just said, draw something. Yeah. I don't yeah. care what it is. But again, it's that the whole, the whole practice is just the exercise is like, you're this, this desire and this feeling, I have to make everything original, each little oh, thing. And I had yeah. one lady, man, I mean, she was killing it and mm -hmm. each, but it was hindering her from just getting much done. And it was just so... Yeah. It's a, you know, whether you're young or old, the power of just feeling everything's got to be original. 
mm-hmm. um, is is incredible. Which, like you said, it's good. I used to be the same way. Mm-hmm. Like I had to be original, and if it's not, and also it's got to be perfect. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Like there's at some point where you just got to be like, man, you got to get your art out there. You got to get whatever yeah. you're creating out there. Just do it. Like, um, and I'm sure you probably feel the same way. Once I get it out there, yeah, I may get feedback of like, okay, this. This was not good. Right, and you this will. This sucked. Yeah, right. and I get that too. But at least that's like, okay, now I can make it better. Yeah, like, we're over a huge hump just getting it out there for the first time. I don't know if it's like this in the like the traditional art space, but in the technology space, this is just one of the, one of the axioms I try to live by now, and I don't do a very good job. But someone told me once that uh, when it comes to making an app and releasing it, if you release an app, a first version of an app that you're not embarrassed by, you have spent too much time. Whoa, that's a good, yeah, yeah, I like that. That's hard. <laughs> that's so hard. That is, but man, that is a, yeah. yeah, that's a really good thing to live by. And I love the idea, part of play is experiment, you know, yeah. like, I don't know what's going to happen, I'm going to throw it out there. I think what I love hearing about you speak, John, is that, um, I, okay, I'm going to show my age, alright, kind of the MacGyver moment, <laughs> you know, like, so many of us are so afraid to just jump and just try something, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, I got into just animating stuff. Yeah. Literally, like, I'm like, just recently, I was trying to make a um, a spray can appear to, like, you squeeze it and spray comes out, it looks real. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, mm-hmm. but that MacGyver moment of, like, can I make this program or machine yeah. or whatever do what mm-hmm. I want it to do? Um, and that process, I've realized, that's where I tell people all the time, it is, I mean, yes, the product's awesome because we're trying to make money here and we got to make a living and, you know, eat and all that stuff, but... It, the process I find almost more exciting because once I'm done with the product, I'm like, oh, that's cool, that's awesome. But mm-hmm. I've gotten so much yeah. out of that process of yeah. like either utter failure when I've learned or I've mm-hmm. like succeeded in making the paint spray or spray smoke, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, like again, if you're not an artist, we, I really don't care. Like, <laughs> you, you could still, like, that, there's some innate caveman mentality mm-hmm. of, like, figure it out. How can we make a spear out of this stick, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I love hearing it because it sounds like there's so much play and experimenting and oh, yeah. learning on your own, digging yeah. into what you can find. So cool, yeah. man. Hey, everybody, that wraps up part one with John. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Man, you got to join me next week for part two. We are going to get into some sweet virtual reality. Hey, everybody have an awesome Monday morning, and I will see you next week, Monday morning, in the treehouse.